thank you for being here. I am, as always, humbled first and uh, ambitious second. Because one thing that I don't see very many people in the trade that I am in, which is medicine, do, is to understand what the, the best mixture, mixture of trades is. You clearly have to have a ammunition to go and fight something as devastating as EB is. But I don't think that you can accomplish it unless you and you are somewhat like you are. You know, the stories that you have heard today and you know all of you that have been living amongst EB, with EB, know this. But others may not know that. So part of our mission is to spread not just the knowledge of EB as such, but also spread the the ability to to think through the problems that only medicine and science can solve. And also, it's not just EB. The EB is overwhelming, but it fits into a bigger picture, in my opinion, of how we live, who who are we, and uh, we all live. We all have a picture of our own, and we sort of live within the picture, and we understand why is that certain things happen the way we want them. And that is only until there is some disaster, some great hammer that comes and breaks that picture, that we are left naked and alone in facing basically a amorphous universe where danger is everywhere and there is no sense to be conscious. And this has been the driving force behind a lot of what has been accomplished in medicine and science. So the, the way out of that nonsense land of unbearable, unnecessary suffering such as in EB, such in an extreme way in EB, is in medicine and science. And if you look back 200 years, even 100 years ago, medicine was a disaster. There was nothing just about it. Very few did any antibiotics. Almost no pain control. Surgery is the most rudimentary way you can imagine. People died of afflictions that were now almost eradicated. And the difference between 100 years ago and today is almost entirely research, almost entirely laboratory research. Because good doctoring is the basis of any good practice I've ever known. The compassion is the basis of what. But does not change the course of medicine. You can be all compassionate you, 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 you can make your heart beat, and yet you may not accomplish what you are after, which is, as Casey said and Vanessa said, a cure for this. So for that cure part, you do need to go to the lab, and you need to understand the disease before you can fix it. And that was the that is, this combination of compassion and being smart about the problem has been the motivation of my professional and personal life. <coughs> so the way you go about this is many unexpected things happen because of people like you. I am actually doing this. I, I, I've been doing other things. I, I treat children with leukemia for the day. And with other diseases, some of them genetic, some of them non genetic. But the reason I am working very hard, as hard as you are working, doing your part on EV, is because of one of you. And uh, a mother who brought this 
to my attention. And as Christy eloquently said at the beginning, your life changes with that knowledge. You cannot go back and unknow that this exists. And uh, because of that first meeting, we were basically as you are. You know, you basically give more than you think you can. So we started on almost nothing. We started with an idea that was totally preposterous and absolutely against everything that has been known in medicine to that day. And uh, it has been a sequence of, of, of chances that we, we ended up with a solution. And that is where things started to happen. So we went from basic knowledge, basic chemistry of the disease, to the biology of the disease in the cell, to the, to the MIRI model of recessive dystrophic epidermolysis of all cell. Then put it all together, figure it out how it works, model the disease and its treatment in the lab, and that's when we were able to turn it around and open the first clinical trial that for the first time in existence of medicine would be any really reasonable step on the pathway to the cure. So now, more than five years after the first treatment, we have more than two dozen children and one young adult transplanted and treated. And uh, it is, for the first time, something that brings more than just compassion, but something that actually can change the course of the disorder. Now, we are hugely helped by people like you, and uh, by sort of the gravitational field that knowledge of EB and its depth brings. Because we not only got people like you who support the research, because research, as everybody knows, is quite expensive to do, we have people that fund research that understood on the federal and national level that this is something that will help to advance medicine. And not just a, not just EV. They I have to be you know very clear. They would probably not fund EV because they they is rare. I always counter it's only rare if it is not you or somebody that you love or it depends on you. If it is, you know it's not rare anymore, right? Mm -hmm. From the from the budgeting federal standpoint, it, it actually is rare. But I was able to point to them, you know, how important the knowledge of skin and its, and its healing will be, that will come only from a focused research on the bee. And I was able to make that argument in a way that they went into it and funded millions and millions of dollars uh, from the federal budget for us to do this. I did the same thing and went to the Department of Defense and pointed out that the soldiers that are burned chemical burns or thermal burns, they really are not very well treated. You know, there's not any treatment for an extensive burn. And EB is, is a genetic burn. That, that's that, that's the, the, the closest, you know, to that element. So, so they understood that as well and also funded the research. Then there are people in the industry that see an opening in this way of thinking about skin. So everybody, you know, I always push this on every single level I could imagine, because unless you get the critical mass of people, funds and ideas in one spot, you never achieve the escape velocity that I think that we have achieved and we are basically keeping and advancing the momentum of what has been achieved. Now, the treatment that we have is not a cure. That's very important. 
it's closest to the cure that I can see this term of medicine. But we are not there yet. And because we have used the same blend of humility and ambition that I described at the beginning to help us guide where we should go next, we went after the, the common denominator of all ED, which is its genetic nature. And we have designed a way of taking that gene that makes types of collagen and it's and it's it's faulted in children and adults with DD and other genes that are involved in other forms of DD and uh, we designed a way of a genomic surgery whereby we go to the side that's that, that has been broken and we fix it and turn it around so that the types of collagen or Collectin or laminin or any other gene that is that is not common in DED can be restored to And in its own way, because of again, people in this room and people who are motivated by the people in this room, that we were able <laughs> to accomplish what is the first ever correction of any genetic disorder by this methodology. So this is a new book. In medicine in general, it's been motivated by ED, but it's going to benefit a huge number of individuals. And uh, the person who actually spearheaded all this is sitting in this room. And his cells were the first one corrected ever in this methodology. So the gene therapy and the combination of gene therapy with the cell therapy is what I think is the future of the treatment. What I think is going to be, hopefully in my lifetime, hopefully very soon, what would be considered a cure for ED. So there's no way we can slow down you know, on this pathway. If anything, the intensity has to increase. And that's why I have been very active in getting people involved, getting the necessary ideas on the books, you know, and getting them explored so that we can keep the momentum and get this going. Because as I said a minute ago, there are many conditions like this. And if you were not involved, I may not be involved. You know, I, you know, it, 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 it's a, it, it, you have to see yourself like as a group of people who behave in a big sense of war, as well as as a humanly possible, that are behaving as noble as you possibly can, and uh, because of them, because of you, the ED got the attention that it did, and got the, the smarts that it needs now. Because if you were not doing this, I'd be doing something different. And EB would be like it has been for hundreds and hundreds of years, for another decade, for another two decades, for another 50 years, I don't know. There are 1,800 genetic disorders of mass. The ones that have treatment are less than 10. All right? The ones that have cured is probably zero. So it matters a great deal what you do for ED for people with ED, of course, but also for bringing a little more to the universe of, of goodness and to ward off you know, the, the, the darkness of suffering in a major, in a major way. So I'm deeply grateful to everybody here for recognizing that even though our lives, individually and collectively, may only occasionally make sense, and uh, may many times be driven by what do we do and when we're going to do it, 
rather than how we do it and why we are doing it. So sort of the content winning over the form that you can keep a mind focused on something as noble as it is a research towards the cure of epidermolysis. Thank you very much.